friend and your remarkable Premier, Anastasia Palaszczuk. <laughs> Alongside all the outstanding members of my United Queensland team here today, I would also like you to please acknowledge perhaps my, definitely my favourite Queenslander, Chloe, my wife. Thanks for coming. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet. I pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. And in this campaign, we are backing these words of respect with action. 400 new Indigenous teachers in our schools, doubling the number of Aboriginal rangers who protect our environment, and perhaps most importantly, more Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander candidates representing the Labor Party than ever before at the national level. Now, as you might have heard, Mr Turnbull and his pals are having their launch in Sydney today. The Liberal Party assembling to arrogantly slap each other on the back to celebrate a victory that Mr Turnbull claimed they'd already won some weeks ago. I all want you to take a moment and actually spare a thought for the person who has to do that seating plan for their launch. <laughs> if you try it alphabetically, you get Abbott, Abetz, Andrews, Bernardi, Brandis. If you seat the ladies first, you run out halfway along the first row. If you do it by policy, everyone grabs the most right-hand seats and poor old Malcolm's got to find one there too. Anyway, enough about them. Friends, back in May, in Tasmania, where I began this campaign, and every day since, from Beaconsfield to Brisbane. I have said that this election is about choices and priorities. We choose local jobs for local people, a tax cut for, a tax cut for small business, backing advanced manufacturing and renewable energy, and 15,000 new apprenticeships. We choose education. Gonski funding for our schools, for once and for all. <laughs> Affordable university, not $100,000 degrees and the deregulation of the Liberal Party. And we are going to clean up the dodgy private providers in vocational education because Labor's backing public tape all the way. We choose health. We choose decent funding for our hospitals, affordable medicine, and we choose to protect Medicare. <laughs> We've chosen in this campaign to prioritise roads, rail, and a first-rate fibre national broadband network. And we most certainly choose equality and equal treatment for the women of Australia and an end to family violence. We choose real action on climate change and we choose to protect the Great Barrier Reef. Now, our opponents have made choices too in this campaign. But no amount of waffle dressed up as oratory can disguise the fact that my opponent is, and always will be, a prisoner of his party, a hostage to extreme right-wing ideology. Mr Turnbull says this is a time for stability. But you cannot have stability without unity. Indeed, you cannot have stability 
when you're cutting Medicare. You cannot have stability when you're not funding the schools properly. You cannot have stability when you have a poor climate change policy and you offer Australians a second-rate NBN. Mr Turnbull does not represent stability. And you certainly cannot have stability when your party is not united. Our party is united. The Liberals are not united. And the single biggest risk to the Australian economy in the next three years is three more years of a divided Liberal government. Our people cannot afford another three years of administration from a weak Liberal Prime Minister who spends half his time worrying about his day job and the other half fighting a civil war within his own party. We cannot afford a part-time Prime Minister who doesn't lead his own party totally. And behind their four smiles today and the awkward music, when we watch them, those Liberals in that party are sharpening their weapons of revenge for the impending civil war in that party after the election. We know they're doing this because shamefully their first target is marriage equality. <laughs> this $160 million plebiscite that Malcolm Turnbull seeks to inflict upon Australians. The price he is saying we all must pay for his prime ministership, it will dredge up prejudice and it will divide our country. In Australia, no one should have to justify their relationships and their sexuality to anyone else. It's no one's business but theirs. <laughs> And under Labor, the Parliament will do its job. And we will legislate to make marriage equality a reality within the first 100 days of a new Labor government. We've been hearing from opposition leader Bill Shorten doing a second launch in Brisbane this time after his launch last week in Sydney.